how, what are the challenges that the board will face in engaging in a in deciding allocation for a CSR activity? See, when they are doing it on their own or floating their own NGO, it's pretty clear. Right. But what if they are doing it? They want to allocate money to another NGO. Right. So if if you just speak the technicals, then uh, if they want to allocate it to any NGOs, I've told you first they should meet the NGOs uh, should meet that threshold. That is, they are three years old and they have an experience in that kind of an NGO, that kind of a. CSR. And they must be NGOs because no for-profit vehicles, even if they are dedicated to any of these purposes, are allowed. The no. law says that they must be an NGO, right? They have to be NGOs. They have to be NGOs. They right. have to be NGOs, and they have to be NGOs which are under existence for three years. Right. So initially, when I was telling you that there are around out of the 33 lakh, there are around 10 lakh NGOs which are uh, eligible. So these are the 10 lakh eligible NGOs. Right. Right. So so they should be under in an existence for three years, and they should have an experience in that kind of an area of CSR initiative which you have decided. Now right. now the company can I can give. The money of CSR either as a corpus donation, or it can be given like as 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 a designated fund. There are two things which can be done. Right. So uh, it will be good if you can explain these methods. Right. Uh, so basically, the, the the difference is that an NGO in India can receive money as donation. Uh, so the money it receives as donations is that either it can receive it as donations or it can receive it as memberships. Uh, at, and in certain places, it also receives as uh, as as the money given for the service is offered. Let's not go deeper into it. Let's talk about the donation. So when the donations are received, the donations can be received as corpus donations. Now corpus donations are given uh, with just a specific direction that whatever money I'm giving will be forming a part of the corpus. And such sums or funds can be retained by the NGOs for a longer period of time, and they can be spent after a longer time. Uh, and for any of the purposes of the NGO, typically. Yes, so that forms uh, the corpus, and corpus is something which goes on for a longer time, and the NGO usually spends the corpus to uh, fulfill its objects. Now, apart from the corpus, you receive donations with certain specific directions. When I say specific directions, uh, so they come with a specified activity. For example, for instance, if I am a company and I am giving a donation to an NGO, and I say that you need to spend only for the activities which okay. have been mentioned. Uh, and can you repeat this part huh, about the about the donation because we suddenly had a lag in bandwidth. So about if there is any about the designated function bit, designated uh, fund bit. Designated funds are funds given to an NGO for a specified purpose. Right. For a specified purpose. When a fund is given for a specified purpose, it becomes a designated fund. So, for example, I am. My CSR initiative is to look after the monuments and heritage property in and around Delhi. I engage a, an NGO which is doing that work for the last three years, and now I give that donation specific uh, in clear terms that this is why I am giving you the funds. That is a specific purpose has been specified. This becomes a designated fund. Okay, can we Wherein have an example? I, huh, so that's a, for example, I, I just give a designated fund and I say that uh, to NGO X Y Z. I am giving the company ABC Lim, Private Limited or ABC Limited is uh, in it under its CSR initiative. We have a CSR policy, and under the policy, we have decided that we will take care of all the heritage uh, properties and monuments which have been notified by the Archaeological Society of India as heritage properties, and we would be our CSR spent would be going on these monuments. And so, therefore, we are providing you this money, and your job would be to undertake this on behalf of this thing, and whatever term sheet which you have. In okay, this. okay. So this is a designated so is fund. A, absolutely. So this is, you know, the, the, actually the the thing is that uh, there are certain ambiguous provisions which have come in. So there are certain grey areas which the statute has left, and we are still waiting for certain clarifications. And I believe it will only come down in in practice. Because there are no certain precedences, because it's a new statute that they have been clarified. So if you start with, for example, if I if I, if I speak about the ambiguous areas, one of them is the is the donation and corpus. So this is one of the areas which I believe has also a, a grey area attached to it. So one question, Anjani, what is practically the difference? I mean, I got the difference in terms of the meaning of a corpus donation versus a designated fund. But right. for, in, for practical purposes, does this have legal? Imp this has some legal implications in the sense that this is a, this has a Absolutely. condition, okay? But accounting uh, 
perspective wise or with what is the implication of this distinction so when you speak about the implication as i told you corpus donation is something a donation or a fund which comes with a specific direction not for a specific purpose when it comes right. with a specific direction that it form a part of specific direction is that it will form a part of purpose that's right. a specific direction right when it comes as a specific direction as a corpus fund that ngo can retain that money for a longer duration of time that is if i get a corpus fund today right, not right. necessarily i have to it's like a capital contribution mm -hmm. i can use it over a period of time okay mm -hmm.